Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in this portion of my basement that I refer to as my wormery, and the reason it's called my wormery is because all these trays that you see out here, as well as that bag hanging in the frame over there, these systems all have composting worms living in them. And as you can imagine, with all these worms, you gotta keep on it, make sure they're well fed. And that's what we're gonna be doing here today. We're gonna be visiting in with the pair of bins that house the so-called original red wiggler worms. And I've got a few bits of info about these systems over here. They've been in service now for 158 days and 13 feedings have occurred so far over that time. The last of which occurred two weeks ago, 14 days ago, since we last checked in on these little guys to give them their 13th feeding. And you know, I did notice something over here, not only on the the red wiggler bins with the original red wigglers in it, but also the neighboring two systems over here. If you look closely, you could see castings material deposited all around the rim of uh, not only, you know, the two systems we're going to be checking in on today, but um, also the neighboring two systems. So I've not had a chance yet to figure out why this was uh, occurring. I did, however, already um, come in here with my broom and clean up all the dead worms I found on the floor. And it looks like I might have even missed one. But, um, yeah, I don't know what was going on in here. Hopefully uh, the damage isn't too severe from whatever it is that was causing these poor wormies distress. So let's, let's get these bins up on the bench and see if we can figure out what was going on. If nothing else, at least we're going to give them some food. All right, let's get to work. Along with this assortment of yummy foods I bought down here for the wormies, I've also got a couple soiled napkins that I intended to um, compost away. So that'll go into the bins as supplemental bedding when we feed. And and you know, before we put these napkins to that use, let's put them to one other quick use here right in the beginning, which would be to help us tidy up a little bit. At least try to knock off some of the material that the worms left behind here. At first I wondered if coming in with the spray bottle might be the way to go, but it does feel to me like doing it dry is doing a really good job. Just kind of knocking off these little things that are hardly even adhering. They're just sort of popping right off and they, they're an easy cleanup, luckily. And you know, the other thing I kind of noticed was it was here on bin number one, the, the one that was on top of the stack. It's over here, it seems to me like the it was where the worms were really coming out of. And, you know, as a result of that, they would have been, um, yeah, they would have been just kind of going over the edge and landing in the system right below, which was luckily bin number two. So I have a feeling that, yeah, there were casualties on the floor, but um, I think a good many of them might have really just ended up in the lower bin. Hopefully. So, whatever. It's uh, always unfortunate to see when the worms uh, freak out this way. But uh, it didn't seem like it was all that bad. I mean, I had to, like I said earlier, sweep up some dead wormies. But luckily not too many. Alright, let's, let's make some room for getting these little guys fed. I've got some stuff out here on the surface. You know, the only coverings, as you saw, here were uh, sheets of newspaper. And despite the fact that there's not a lot of cover by using only a sheet of newspaper, the, um, you know, leading you to believe that, hey, you're probably going to have pretty arid, dry conditions out on the surface. Other than some of this slightly dry material I'm brushing aside, the rest of it all seems nice and damp, right there. There's worms hanging out right there on the surface. A couple of them here and there. So uh, I think we've got ourselves a pretty cozy environment for these little wormies. So, all right, for whatever reason, I just had this 
compulsion to break that piece of wood. <laughs> so like as we normally do, we're just going to excavate down the middle to make ourselves a little bit of space into which we can drop today's feeding. I can see leftovers from... These might even go back to feedings. because I think I, in the video from last time I sort of recalled already bumping into cantaloupe rinds that were already leftovers during the last feeding two weeks ago. Other things that are going to remain for quite some time as leftovers are things like pumpkin stems. So we've clearly got the remains of past feedings in here. But these are the sort of remains that are, are going to just be around for quite some time. The um, outer husk of a mango seed and various other things. It does seem to me like there is still an assortment of different stuff that the worms could certainly be working on down here in the middle. But there's, I don't see any harm. There's really no harm, I don't think, in just giving them a little bit more. You know, what? normally when I bump into a stick like this, I would just have the impulse to remove it. But what the heck, the other little stick I broke earlier, too, was quite thick. And maybe we'll just let them go. Maybe they'll actually get to some point where I can break them up more easily into a little shrap shrapnel that would probably more easily go. So, we've kind of thoroughly gone through bin number one here, excavating leftovers that are typically the sort of things that are going to take a little bit of time to break down. So, you wouldn't want to just leave the worms with only, you know, pumpkin stems and whatever leftover cantaloupe rinds saying hey you don't get anything new until you finish the old stuff first certain things just take a little bit longer to get to that stage where the worms can actually start working on them some of the stuff just might be a little bit too tough i mean here too this husk of a mango seed definitely a popular spot for the worms they love being inside of it right big and small tons of castings left behind but this is a really tough material, you know, it's going to take them a long, long time to break it down. Down in the worm bin, here we've got the, what appears to be the stem of a banana. It's so cool how it kind of goes to shreds and little fibers all start detaching from each other. And well, let's see what other kind of leftovers are we bumping into here. Yeah, more cantaloupe rinds. <laughs> and other things, possibly potato peel. But it's tough to tell. All right. Everything in these systems, both of them seems quite healthy, you know. I was kind of looking around for signs of trouble. I didn't really notice anything, you know. I mean, if you as the viewers uh, spotted something that it was, you know, clearly obvious that I should have picked up on but didn't, then please let me know. But I don't really have much reason for concern. Perhaps it wasn't even something specific to this bin that was causing trouble. That's the thing, you know, four bins right next to each other all appearing to react to something. Or at least two systems, you know, maybe it was just the two top systems. Maybe something, uh, something they were hearing, some vibrations of something that was going on right outside the window. But then the question comes up, why only these systems reacting that way? Why not all of them, you know, so... I don't know, it's a little bit of a mystery, I'll admit. I don't know exactly what's happening, but um, I guess it was sort of a one-and-done occurrence, or at least so I would think, because I don't see anything that appears to be signs of trouble here. So hopefully that is a accurate diagnosis of the situation. I guess I'm going to take a little combination of freshly made and... A little bit of the seasoned as well here. Well, that was a big, big handful. Let's compensate by giving the other guys an equal quantity. So, nice, generous portion of bedding here into which we can start returning some of the old stuff that we encountered along the way. I mean, out here on the top, too, that stuff that we collected in the very beginning, sometimes I sort of take pity on some of that material that seems to have been a little bit neglected because it's a little bit drier being out on the surface <laughs> kind of try to get that down into the feeding zone too but now we're really starting to take up a lot of space here and we haven't even fed <laughs> so let's let's 
keep the impending feeding in mind here too as we proceed. I guess we'll have a, an opportunity to go around to the edges as well and bring in material with which we can cover up if we feel the need to. But yeah, some of these items are pretty big. This was um, cut in half earlier. Still frozen for the most part. Came out of the refrigerator perhaps a half hour ago. Each system is going to get a piece of burnt toast. <laughs> and I took a frozen banana. And this is not just banana peels. This is a whole banana. Going in for the wormies as a special treat too. I would think, you know, all of these things appear like stuff that's going to probably go pretty quickly. And here too, this is something I don't even know what it is. Perhaps some sort of breadcrumbs, prepackaged breadcrumbs or something. You know, sometimes I get, um, I get stuff to give to the worms, which or from someone else's cupboard, some other stuff that has probably gone stale <laughs> or has gotten too old or whatever the case may be. So just another kind of weird, unusual thing that I've never fed it to any of my worm bins before and quite possibly never will again. <laughs> but hey, if it was something that was going to be good enough for the humans, it's probably good enough for the wormies too. So I just added a little bit of... A little bit of grit there too, my pulverized eggshell grit on top of the foods to possibly help the worms work down their yummy meal here, should they need any grit. And here's these two napkins. So, not much left to do here. Let's just go out to the edges and use covering up the feeding zone as our excuse to go grab some material from the sides, bring it over, kind of maybe trying to blend in some of this scraps of stuff that we're encountering along the way here these little thin pieces of skin potato peel is what i'm assuming it is just from the look of it and so many nice castings i really like the way everything feels cool and damp and as you can see it's full of worms all seemingly comfortable so i don't think it's the comfort of the environment we only had paper coverings, right? So it's not like their oxygen supply would have been um, obstructed or anything like that. So I don't think there was any reasons to think there was anything going on that's anaerobic. I, I keep going back to the idea that, hey, something weird happening in two separate systems. It's not something that was going on with this, within the system. It was some external um, stimulus that was causing them to freak out basically you know climb the walls look for another place to be um and i guess maybe i should just thank my lucky stars perhaps it could have been a lot worse maybe all my bins could have reacted that way maybe whatever was causing the disruption or discomfort perhaps it could have gone on much longer than it did perhaps it just sort of happened and ended quickly hopefully um so it does seem like there could have been the potential for a much bigger issue here than what really ended up occurring. So I guess I'm looking at it from that perspective that it seems like it could have been a lot worse. Luckily, it really wasn't all that bad. Unfortunate, yes. And it'll happen from time to time, I suppose. But luckily, it wasn't all that bad. So uh, I've got a couple things left to do here. Stuff to get cleaned up, stuff to get put away, but I'm not going to keep you around for that. That's boring. Before I go really quick, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.